Welcome to Revlog. Um, first, I want to say thank you to cast and crew. We've had to be flexible for me this week. So we're, we're a little off schedule here. You're worth it, Pastor. Well, thank you. Thank you. I'm <laughs> grateful for that. that. Well said. Uh, yes. That's very kind of you. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, but, but, you know, my, my wife is, has had surgery, so we've been dealing with those things. Um, Brian's building where he lives has been on fire. Yeah. Um, it's been it's been, it's a, been hard, a hot time in the old town. <laughs> so I, I don't know. I guess Aaron must be living well over there. He's, he's not dealing with. <laughs> right. Last night we were saying, wonder what time the fire is tonight. <laughs> <laughs> After two nights of fires. That's that's exciting. exciting. Oh, man. You know, we, we're, we're living our own version of Job, aren't we? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. Yay, verily. <laughs> Maybe we should let Pastor Aaron start us today because this this yes, is... Yes, please. Um, I want to say dark text, but I don't know if it's a dark text. It's definitely a heavy, heavy text. Yeah. Um, you know, that, That's a good distinction, and, and it is heavy. Yeah. It I is mean, heavy, it, not necessarily dark. Yeah, my first read was sad. That was... It's kind of a sad I, just, text. Just, you know, as he's... One of the things I just struggled with, and I do every time I, I encounter this joke, uh, because here's a righteous man who doesn't sin with his lips, and we've talked about that in, in previous weeks, but just it's, it verges on complaining. It mm-hmm. verges on, and, and, I, and I struggle with how comfortable am I with God in, in my discourse? Because, right. I mean, Job is not holding back here, mm-hmm. and you want to go, at what point does this cross the line? At what point? And... And I think one of the things that I've got to, to check in my own heart is is my motivation and my purity is probably never where Job's is. <laughs> so, you know, if I'm going to start down that line, I'm probably bringing a lot more of, of my own baggage to it rather mm-hmm. than, than a pure heart. Mm-hmm. But here, I mean, it's it's uncomfortable. I, I, let me say it that way. It's uncomfortable to read this, this, this discourse with Job because you're like, do you know who you're talking to? Yeah. Do you realize the... But but he is he's very well, wrong. and I find myself similarly in in some of the lament psalms saying I don't know that I can repeat this as my own. I agree, and, yeah, and that's that's a bit of a struggle, and and maybe maybe on some level that's a weakness of my own faith, not being able to say those things. I don't, I don't know. I, I appreciate that honesty because the lament psalms. I mean, typically, you know, evangelicals, you know, shy away from them because they're they're dour, you know, in, right. in, in, at the beginnings at least. Right. But mm-hmm. but that kind of honesty is mm-hmm. is we're uncomfortable with when it comes to God because I, we've got this mindset that we're not supposed to talk that way. Well, I don't the, know. the lament psalms do not reflect the Protestant work ethic. I mean, let's be honest, yeah. and mm-hmm. and it's not the bootstrap mentality, and we're uncomfortable with that. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's right. And and I think on some level too. Um, we we feel like we we have to uh, you know approach God like royalty yeah yeah uh, where right. we have to be prim and proper yeah. and um, yeah there's a certain posture of, of yes right I, I think uh, if I might follow up with that one of the things that I've come to as I've I've studied the Psalms a lot in just that um, one of the things we never see in Scripture is you know. Whereas the the psalmist may say, you know, smash the teeth of my enemies, you know, mm-hmm. bash their heads in rocks. Yeah. Um, it never says God says okay. Yeah. It never right. says, and, and so he did. Right. It de- what right. it, what it says is the psalmist is just letting out his just rage, and God is allowing him the to Bible do that. The Bible gives room for us to do that, right? And and ninety eight percent of the time, at the end of it, as as the psalmist is spent, he goes. <sighs> But you are my hope right. and my salvation, right. and it's God just is giving that space that right. that that we often not ninety eight percent, not always. Right, uh, there are you some. Know, the, the bashing yeah. of yeah. blessed is he who dashes your infants to pieces yeah. on the rocks. That's pretty much how it ends. That's uh, that yeah, one. And, and I think when we come to our conversation with the Lord, if we're going to err one way or the other, if we're going to err on being sort of the, the proper greeting for royalty versus just sheer honesty. We, we want to err on the side of honesty and openness with I, what's on our heart I, to the Lord, right? Amen to that. Yeah. Um, and and I, think, that. I think God blesses and recognizes that in us. And, and I think he would rather us share the emotion of our heart. Yeah. Uh, even, even if it's faulty. And, and I, ju- I think there is space for both because I mm-hmm. want to approach God with reverence and sure, awe. Sure, right, right. But, but not with this that I can't. I mean, he doesn't expect you just to have th- that that formality for formality's sake. Right. It's that you acknowledge that he is right. God sovereign 
uh, reigning over all, and yet he wants that relationship that is open and honest. Well, your Sunday best could either steward what you have or hide. There you go. Something that's right. You know, oh, that's and, good. And it's yeah. it, it, which one of those is at work? You know, at, in in how you're approaching God. That's, I mean, that's, that's a big question. Well yeah, absolutely. Would our lives be better if we wore a bow tie? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. I'm not hiding. Who, who said that's the Sunday best? Uh, <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> they certainly would be pr- more prim and neater. <laughs> uh, you know. So, Brian, as, as you read these heavy words from Job, uh, what what struck you? Where did, where did you go? Um, the phrase self pity uh, came to mind, and and like you <clears throat> said, I have a problem o- often with when I see somebody that from whom I get a, a whiff of self pity, I I normally recoil mm-hmm. to that. But the question for me is why 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 is it? You know, I do. You know, I, I hear somebody say I. Basically, I do and do and do, you know, and this is the thanks I get. And I think, join the club, you know, or uh, and, you know, and and, and I think <clears throat> to myself, maybe I'm afraid that that's how I feel, too. And I don't want to acknowledge that. And I and I see these lament psalms or I see Job saying this and I think um, I, I want to be stronger than that, you know, yeah. and, and I'm not and I'm not. And there is a there is a there's a place to I think to say I need some comfort here and I'm not finding it anywhere. Yeah. And and Job may be somewhere in there right now with, yeah. with this. Yeah. I, I, I need some comfort. And if you can supply, you know, if you try to supply it to yourself, it sounds like self pity, but sometimes that's all you have, yeah. you know, or that's all you can find. Yeah, I, I think sometimes, and I think this is our general background in sort of American Protestant Baptist life. Um, is, is it right? We, we have we've we've seen some bad actors in this space before, and this is what I mean. We've seen people who just wallow in self pity twenty four seven, and most of us in sort of prim and proper Baptist life don't want to be seen as ever that. Exactly. No, I don't want ever anybody to ever think I just right. wallow in self pity. I don't need charity, you know. Yeah, that kind yeah, of thing. right. Yeah. But we are likely the ones who need to express some of those emotions when we experience them. Right. Which means we need to be able to say to people, "I hear that." Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I see that it's hard. Yeah. You know. I mean, if we're creating a space like that, it, it's you know, it's a little, we find comfort, right. I think, from one another. I mean, comfort one another is yeah. is one of our directives. Yeah, because there, there are often, if not always, people in our circles and in our church who are feeling these things that Job is feeling right yeah. now. I mean, all of these difficult thoughts that Job is expressing in chapter 7, um, there are always those among us who are, who are feeling that very thing. And we need to be there with them to weep as they weep. If Job says, I have worked, I always thought that I've, if I worked hard and I was honest, that life would somehow be a little bit better. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's not. And I'm confused by that. Very confused. How many people are thinking the same things as we gather on a Sunday morning? Mm-hmm. That, yeah. Uh, you, you said so many, both of you, just the, the American mindset, the bootstrap men, mentality, yeah, the idea yeah. that, you know, if I work hard enough, things are going to work, you know, just yeah. keep, keep my nose to the grindstone. Even outside of, of our, our, you know, church life, you know, we just feel like if of we course, work hard enough. That's that, exactly that, right. And none of that is going to help us get forward that, that because it, 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 negates the, the the fact that we are broken, that we are in need of a savior, that we are right, right. and so I so if I can transition my my question is I'm I'm asking this A is my is my um refusal to speak honestly with the Lord, mm-hmm. my own recognition of my sin and my what put, what has put me in that position in the first place. Uh-huh. Um and um if I do if I am honest with the Lord, am I am I um, running away, hiding from, f- 
from that sin. I mean, I think I, I just I cannot put myself in, in the place of Job because of his righteousness. And I just I know that when I I have to be able to talk, talk to the Lord honestly, but I also have to confront the fact that that m- most often I've put myself in a position because of my, my choices. Yeah. yeah. yeah well, and, and that's that's one of the things that we do have to recognize in Job. And I'm glad you, you brought us here, um, Aaron, that. Um, much of the difficulty we face in life, we do bring on ourselves, and and our sin has repercussions in our life, but not always. Right? And so Job yeah. is that, but not always. Right? So Job s- is the but not always. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. I mean, that, he really is. That that sometimes the suffering that we face um, was not at our own hand, and for whatever reason, God has allowed it, and we have to sit with that suffering yeah. for whatever that that time is, and and that happens in life too. Um, Often, though, our suffering is just caused by our own sinfulness and yeah. our own short-sightedness. And yeah. Both of those things are true. Yeah, it's that right? constant dialogue because there is right. that those situations and yeah. then there's sin. Yeah. So, yeah, and, and I'll tell you, you know, as a pastor, too, there have been uh, a number of times in ministry where I have quietly rolled my eyes where someone has said, oh, I'm suffering like Job, when it was really just their own making, right? Yeah. It really was. They did this to themselves. And they're like, right. oh, Job. Right. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm being, the, the appeal to Job, <laughs> the and, appeal to Job yeah. when really you just kind of walked into it yourself. <laughs> right. right. So sometimes both of those things happen, but we in this church today where the Lord is taking us is suffering's not always your fault. Yeah. Right. This is, I, I don't, I think that's such a refreshing phrase that's true. And, and I don't think people hear that very often. Yeah. Yeah. So, so Aaron, I think gave us his question. I did. did. There's, I've been asking questions this whole time. I think. <laughs> I think there was a question there. So, Br, what what was your question? My Go question ahead. is, and I, I base this off of uh, Job's actual wrestling. You know, I thought I was, you mm-hmm. know, doing this, and now I'm confused and sad. What is it about me that matters to God? Mm-hmm. If it's not my labor, if it's not, you know my uh intelligence or whatever it may be what what is it about me that matters to god and i think i need to i i I would like to know that Mm. you know and and i guess you know the the broad answer would be well because you're just you you know or because god made you you know or whatever but i i really would like to have that dialogue with god what is it about me that matters to you because i thought that I had to be a certain way and mm-hmm. apparently not. Yeah, that's a good question. I, I, I wonder, and I, I mean, I don't have uh, an answer for that directly, but I do wonder if some of that goes back to being created in the image of God. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah. Those kinds of right. things. And, and, you know, to where you're alluding, being being formed by God in the womb. Right. Um, but yeah, that's because to your point, it's not our work. It's not our stuff. Yeah. It did, so. It's on our performance. Yeah, it's not. Right. And we, we would say that to our own children even, mm-hmm. wouldn't we? But then we have a hard time understanding that about so ourselves. So tell us why you love God. your children. Yeah, well, each one by name. Maybe we need to reflect on, on that kind of thing, you know? Okay, number one. Uh, you go first. <laughs> yeah, you have three wonderful, beautiful children. Yeah, we Thank we you. love them. Did you hear too. that? <laughs> They're not watching. They don't care. Uh, <laughs> Linda Lee, grab the kids. <laughs> yeah, bring them in. <laughs> Are they included in the Nielsen ratings for this thing? I don't think so. I don't know how we got there. I don't either. I'm very glad we're studying this bookmark for three months. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this bookmark is I know, just. I, I, I am a little hesitant here because at, at times while you were talking, it looked like you were alluding to scripture, but you're pointing <laughs> to this bookmark. This is the hope of America right here. The bookmark? Oh, no, I meant the Bible. Okay. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> it's like holding up your, if you preach from your iPad, you know, you hold. <laughs> How are we going to land this, this plane? The, I don't know. I don't we, know. We love you. We love <laughs> Brian's children. We love you. Aaron's children. We love you. My Chris's girls. Children, yeah. We yeah. love you. Right. I, um, and for everyone watching, we love you. <laughs> this, we this love is, you for who you are. This is the love podcast right here. Uh, <laughs> there's so, just so much love. Uh, we would we would uh, love to hear what <laughs> your thoughts on this passage in Job chapter 7 are. If it you just would. didn't end the way <laughs> you thought it would. Oh. <laughs>